Oh, mate, people, what's happening? Well, all I gotta show you, I'll win the league with Manchester United. After the result yesterday against West Ham United, which I put out the two each, I was 3 1 Man United. Now, United after that win go fourth, only two, no, three points off the top of the league. <coughs> Currently, at the time of recording, Liverpool and Tottenham are yet to play in their fixtures this weekend. Later the day on Sunday. Now, if they both win, it'll go to a six point gap. But as it is right now, Man United only set a win, one win away from going top. Watching back yesterday's game, watching it, I couldn't catch the first half. But after I only got the second half where, for the first half, West Ham were dominant. They played very good football and they deserve the lead. At half time I was 1-0 West Ham, thoroughly deserved. Now, Oli changed up the tactics at half time, took off Cavani and, and Van der Beek, I think it was, for Bruno and Rashford. Cavani was due to a muscle injury supposedly, but I don't know. Once they came on, West Ham started off the better team within the first 10 minutes. But after that, I was all Man United. Typical United way. Simple football, quick counter, goal. That is what they do. That is what they've been known for. <coughs> Man United, with a, with a record of 385 Premier League points gained from losing positions in Premier League history is the most nuts. All the goals from Man United, the equaliser from Paul Pogba. Very good strike from about 25 yards out. Fabian's got no chance. It's more of, was the ball out or no? As we don't know. Looking back, it's very hard to call. VAR couldn't decide whether it went out or no, so the goal had to stand. The other be clubs going around, probably showing that I went out. But at the moment, VAR cannot decide was in or out. E either way, it was a fantastic strike from Pogba for one each. For the second goal, it was played out to Tellez. Tellez hit the byline, smashed it in. Greenwood, one touch, sent out Bonner the wrong way, back to Italy, and absolutely smashed down with his left foot. Bomb corner for 2 1 within the space of five minutes. Later on in the game, I was looking like West Ham might pick up again. I might nick something, but Rashford had a couple of chances he couldn't bury. But come late on, he's buried it. It was a very good finish from Rashford. Got sent through and goal, chipped Fabianski, sat him down on his backside for 3 1. Three points for United, three goals, back to winning ways. They definitely deserved the performance United. It was a tale of two halves. West Ham in the first, Man United in the second. This puts United fourth, as I've said. 1-1 one, one, at the current time recording of top of the league. Probably go to two wins after the night. Moving on to match two was Manchester City and Fulham. I predicted a 4-0 for Man City. It was only 2-0. Watching everything back, definitely should have been 4 or 5 now. There was three good saves made from Ariola and goal for Fulham to deny the likes of De Bruyne, Sterling. It was very, very good shot stopping from the French goalkeeper. The first goal was fairly well taken from Raheem Sterling. As the commentator said, that he's not scored in recent times. De Bruyne played the ball through within the fourth minute and Raheem Sterling slaughtered it home for 1-0. The penalty that Raheem Sterling got that De Bruyne scored, which was a very good pen, was questionable. He definitely got touched. It was just was enough to go down. But as we're seeing with VAR now, he pretty much have to go down in a penalty situation to get given the penalty, which that's quite bad. You shouldn't have to go down, but 
That's the day and age we live in. You will call it cheating. Everyone calls it cheating. I def everyone that plays football, the oldest style within the past five to ten years, will call it cheating. But it's this day and age, and it's getting worse with the air. But City definitely deserved the three points. They went fourth, but obviously after United's win, they dropped the fifth. But it was three points for Pep Guardiola's side, which puts them back to back Premier League wins, with both back to back Premier League clean sheets. So both Manchester clubs now move on to the final Champions League game in midweek, where Manchester United need to go to RB Leipzig just to get a point to qualify for the knockouts. As long as United avoid defeat, they will qualify ahead of the Manchester derby next weekend. City have already qualified, so I could assume that City have the top of the group already guaranteed. <coughs> Pep Guardiola will most likely rest his players for the derby next weekend. For what it is, both sides are going in with decent Premier League form. It will definitely be a good watch next weekend for the neutrals. Moving on to the last game, it was Chelsea versus Leeds United. I predicted a 2-1 Chelsea, it was a 3-1 Chelsea. Leeds started off the better in the first half and probably throughout the first half for the better team. It was just down to a good move from Chelsea and a good, finish, good and typical finish from Olivia Giroud that got them back level on the 27th minute after Patrick Bamford put Leeds 1-0 up on the 4th. Leeds probably should have made it another goal or two before half time. I don't think Leeds deserve to lose. They definitely were the better team in the first half and slightly in the second half, but ultimately when you've got the quality Chelsea do have all in the pitch, you're going to find it very hard to keep them quiet. Timo Werner had a very tough game. He had chance after chance, couldn't bury it. But in the 93rd minute, he did get an assist to secure the win. <coughs> Zuma on the 61st minute. Big ball. Big ball in. Ah, you need ball. Cross came in from the corner. Zuma, big Tailman header. Put it in for 2 1 Chelsea. And to start them on the way to the three points. As I've said, Werner did get a counter attack, hit the ball in, squared it, Pulis has scored 3 1, 93rd minute. Chelsea currently sit top at this time of recording at midday. Sunday is when I'm recording this. So they currently sit top by a point, obviously, with Tottenham still playing in the North London derby and Liverpool still to play Wolves. Chelsea deserve the three points. They definitely have been playing well of late. Especially after a 4 0 win in midweek against Sevilla, where she was scoring four goals, definitely helped. <coughs> the Premier League table is now definitely taking shape in all different ways. There is about a four point gap between top and I think six it is. So the start of this Premier League campaign has definitely been a funny one compared to all the previous ones of late. I feel like I've talked about the matches uh, fairly decently today's episode. So before I go, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, share the video with your friends, family, co-workers, neighbours, everyone possible. Link in the description for the official Twitter account for the channel. There's a link in the description for futurecards.com for their Christmas sale all 25% off but if you use our link you will receive 30% off with free shipping as long as you are within the United Kingdom they, all, they offer wide ranges of cards from FIFA 13 through to this one's FIFA 21 they offer different mystery bundles from 3 player 4 to 5 they all kind of custom cards. They are very decent cards, I'd say. But with that, 
Oh, so you go get one for Christmas or that? You won't be disappointed. With that, I've talked enough. Hope you've all had a good weekend. I'll catch you on Friday's episode. Peace. Good. Bye.